and welcome to Live in the Hive. I'm Michelle Eagleton and if you love theatre, you're in the right place. I've got the latest theatre news and interviews of productions that are winging their way to our fair city here in Manchester. A big hello if you're watching on our Facebook page or maybe you're watching on the I Love Manchester Facebook page, the iconic brand dedicated to community and culture. We have got an absolutely jam-packed show. Stay with us tonight because coming up on the show, we have got these guys are oh, well i tell you what we've not got one but two wags in the house tonight and i am talking about rebecca vardy and colleen rooney well not the real people but you know near as damn it we've got laura and lucy the stars of vardy versus rooney the wag of the christie trial this has been brilliant in the west end got some rave reviews it's now going on tour and it will soon be winging its way to the lowry will they come to fisticuffs will they come to blows in the hive Oh, you'll just have to wait and see. They are joining me very, very soon. And if that wasn't enough, we've got the wonderful Christine Mackey. She's going to be telling me about a really exciting production of King Lear that is coming to Hope Mill. And on top of that, every week, as you know, if you've seen the show before, we bring you the latest in Greater Manchester Theatre news. And we have got some really exciting announcements of productions that are coming their way just around the corner actually so let's kick off the show in style excuse the football pun there but i couldn't resist it earlier this week i was joined by two of the stars of the wagatha christie trial it's the first time they have been interviewed together so i was very excited to see what they had to say about being involved in this production, which is based on, of course, the real life trial of Rebecca Vardy and Colleen Rooney. Now, what can we expect? Well, they give me all the gossip and more. Well, I have got to say, let's address the fact that you guys on in the same room together are we not allowed to have you do we need to prize you apart when you're off stage <laughs> yeah it, it, yeah it's been tough it's like a war zone isn't it Lucy? <laughs> <laughs> well we had a you could have had a sleepover in margate but um but you know i've got building to do in the garden so I'm at home. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let the viewers into a bit of a secret, actually, because Lucy came online before Laura did. So I feel that we've already, Rebecca Vardy has got one over on Colleen Rooney. Wow. How do you feel about that, Laura? How are you feeling? Wow, wow that is so Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I really, really am. I can't wait to see how this unfolds. Of course, I know the end game, like Titanic, but it's the build up, isn't it? It's the tension. Mm. You guys get to play it every night. Lucy, it must be a bit of a dream, yeah? It is. It's absolutely amazing. You know, the audience reactions are kind of unlike anything I've ever experienced. I think you probably feel the same, Laura. It's like, it's like a kind of football crowd meets theatre um but we still have just like you were saying michelle we still have audience that come out at the end kind of thinking oh i, d I don't know which way to go it's mm -hmm. it's uh it's certainly a kind of the kind of play that makes everyone chat in the toilets in the interval <laughs> oh i i bet laura yeah yeah because because i think people like you said i think like retrospectively people think oh yeah well spoiler alert we know what happens at the end but actually what is lovely is what this play explores is um how they end up there and then you get to decide yourself i guess whether you you know agree with with that outcome which mm. is which is nice you know as opposed to kind of it being like well we know how this plays out we're just going to go, we're just going along for the ride you know yeah <laughs> You know, we've missed things probably along the way. You know, I feel like I know the story, but I don't really kind of like know the ins and outs of it. And 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 this is what we're getting in in kind of a, a very fun way as well. I hear that it's a courtroom slash football pitch. Come on, spill. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is. There's lots of um, footballing references, footballing puns. The football does play a massive part in this show, not least the set. We have a couple of pundits who act as our narrators and fill in like some of the legal jargon and kind of help you, um, you know, navigate your way through it. So, yeah. And I mean, what other show also features Jamie Vardy and Wayne Rooney on stage with us? So. <laughs> It is absolutely brilliant. And do you have to then go and study these people then? Was it a case of, right, okay, let's see how they move, what their mannerisms are to get it right? Well, yeah, we only had, first time round, we had like a week rehearsal or less maybe. Right. And, and, and then... We had like four days, didn't we? Yeah. Four so, days. Yeah. So, and it was, you know, supposed to be one show and then it's all escalated. But so we had initially limited time, but both of us, you know, did, we did go online and do our research. And with Colleen, there's like a lot when she's really young and then nothing for ages. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Rooney documentary more recently, which was really the kind of little um, Bible for me in that she's talking about more difficult things in her life there. And, and so, and yet, you know, you, Obviously, I am from Liverpool, if you haven't guessed already. I kind of recognise the accent there. At or, all. You don't have to put yeah. that on, Laura. Or so just right. always in character. Always, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Method. Yeah. 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 I'm Scottish. No. <laughs> um, but, um, but, yeah, so, so we, I, think we, I think both of us initially, our approach was, you know, very much... Um, kind of little mannerisms and and like spotting the difference between my accent my scouse accent and Colleen's scouse accent but I think as time's gone on and and we've you know we've kind of we we, we don't want to do sort of parody caricatures versions of these women so so really our, our focus has been on more about getting over there and their motivations and, and why they're there than kind of um you know how exactly would Colleen say this word or whatever because you must really have to kind of sympathise or find something to sympathise with, Lucy, as Rebecca. And I imagine you also get all the booze, right? <laughs> well, do you know, depending on the audience, yeah, yeah very much. <laughs> I imagine the further north that you come, do the booze get louder? Wow. Well, I don't know yet. We'll we find out. We'll find out, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm definitely terrified for Liverpool, I've got to say. Um oh. Absolutely. But I think the thing for me was that ultimately the number one headline for me is that Rebecca has always denied this. Mm -hmm. So I, as an actress, my responsibility for playing someone who is very much a living, breathing person and also somebody who was, you know, the reason that she brought this case was because of all the online abuse and trolling and you know horrendous threats and words that she had to read and receive um I, which is why i do think she brought the case ultimately her truth is that she didn't do it so that's what i have to play that's what i hold on to um and also that the everything that she did go through in terms of all, all that uh, you know online abuse i kind of don't even want to say the word trolling because i think it was so much worse than trolling mm. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the things that I, I try to hold on to. Um, of course it's, you know, it's so hard because she does come out with some absolutely classic one-liners, but, but don't we all at times, don't we all say like contradictory things, you know, I say the most ridiculous things, you know, you get things wrong, you, and also who would want to have their private messages read out? Not me. <laughs> I know, that is crazy. So how does that work on stage? Because there was so much social media, wasn't it, that was going on, mm -hmm. and WhatsApp messages. How do, you, how do you translate that? Well, that's what's great, I think, about our show is because it's a theatre show, we can, we can use that theatricality to our benefit. And so we actually read, we do all our own WhatsApp, Instagram posts. So... Oh. The comedy of the show, a lot of the comedy comes from that clash where a character is saying, I think this, I did this, I believe this. And then they go, well, let's see what you actually said at the time. And then the same person is going, 
well, I didn't do that, or whatever, you know, I've just really killed that joke, I'm aware. It was. <laughs> yeah. You get you get what I mean, right? <laughs> I like it because it then feels like you actually witnessed it. I imagine as as you know that person in the audience, like, oh, I feel like I was there now. I really do. Yeah, and I always remember um, Lisa, our director, again saying when they 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 workshop this or they had a reading of it beforehand, where the barristers, as it would have been in court, the barristers read all those bits out, so it was them kind of saying what Colleen said, what Rebecca said. And then at the very end of that, they were like, let's just try it with the, the girls doing their own. And they were like, you yeah, know, this is this is the show. This is really good. Well, people are absolutely loving it. The reviews are great. I love the fact that somebody somewhere has called it the scouse trap. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Genius. 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 Yeah, and we're on next to the mouse trap, which is even funnier because you know they're next door to us. I think their sign says celebrating <laughs> seven <laughs> years, and ours says celebrating six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, who that. knows? I mean, cut to 70 years' time. Who knows? It could, honestly. And not just us normal punters have been coming to see you. I heard that a few celebrities as well, Katie Price was in the house what about that one yeah. she was that was that was a uh, that the gala night was really quite wild to be honest it was great fun because of course a lot of these people know i know and know people who are mentioned in the play so it's a really you know it's it's a it's a very real current alive thing because usually when you're playing a real person it's historical isn't it or it's you know Oh, it's quite far removed, but this is all very close. And I, I want, yeah. I, I really want Rebecca or Colleen to come and see it. That would be my dream at this point. I would, that would love. Be epic, wouldn't it? Absolutely, Laura. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I well, what I was just going to say then was, even if they don't know that Colleen or Rebecca, um, on that gala night audience, for a lot of that audience it was their life you know they are in 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 the public eye and so they're kind of i'm sure we're thinking oh maybe i should be a bit more careful about doing saying this doing that because if my messages end up in court in a few years time that could be tricky so i think it was maybe a bit eye-opening for them but mm. in terms of rebecca or colleen coming to the show i mean i would absolutely love it but i would be terrified so i would like to know after the occasion yes yeah, <laughs> because otherwise every time i spoke i'd be thinking what are they thinking oh have yeah I do they approve do they approve you know but that would be the moment where you'd probably come out of character and be thinking, are they laughing at this one or are they grimacing? They're kind of like checking the reaction of the audience, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, it would... I mean, I hope... I would hope that if they did come, they would, would like, be, you know, happy with how we're representing them. That would be, you know, for me, that that's really important. I think, you know, we are doing our best to bring out the humanity of these women and their integrity, their intelligence, their strength and how they deal with this mad situation of being in court. And, you know, we both really, really try to do that. So I hope that they wouldn't be like too disappointed in, in what we do. Great to chat to Lucy and Laura there, starring in Vardy versus Rooney, the Wag of the Christie trial. It sounds really, really good. Definitely one to go and see when it comes to the Lowry in June. Now, still to come on the show, I'm going to be joined by Christine Mackey. She's going to be telling me all about really exciting production of King Lear that is heading to Hope Mill Theatre. But of course, first, it is time for this. Greater Manchester Theatre news. What has been going on this week? Well, a new announcement for Hope Mill Theatre. And this is the world premiere of Tu Wong Fu, the musical. Now, you might recognise the name. It's based on the 1995 groundbreaking film, Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. It starred Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, Stockard Channing, Robin Williams, RuPaul, 
you name it. Now, it's set in the 90s New York and it tells the story of three drag queens who embark on a trip across America to attend the Drag Queen of the Year finals in Hollywood camp. Fabulous. This is going to be amazing. It's joyous, it's heartfelt, and the three drags all come together to save America one show tune at a time. It sounds absolutely right up my street, this one. It's going to be at Hope Mill Theatre from the 21st of October for a nine week run and I think they are going to do great things with this one. Cassian is still to be announced but I will update you as soon as I get the low down. And something else which is really exciting and very close to our hearts is of course an audience with stars of stage and screen. Yes, Live in the Hive is going outside of the Hive for one night only and it's fast approaching. It's all part of Greater Manchester the fringe that we're getting involved with this year and we're going to be putting on a show at Sonata Piano and Lounge Bar, an absolutely incredible stylish venue in the heart of the city centre right near St Anne's Square and it's on the Thursday the 6th of July, if you've not got your tickets get in there quick, there's only 80 seats, they're going like hotcakes and the tickets are just £15, now it's all for a great cause this one, something really close to my heart all the ticket proceeds are going to a local charity called Prevent Breast Cancer, the only charity in the UK dedicated to the prediction, prevention of breast cancer. And look at the lineup of stars. You've got to be interested in coming along to this one. I've got the wonderful West End star and Coronation Street star that is Jodie Prenger, Early Doors co-creator and a wonderful all-round funny guy. Phil Mealy and Michelle Holmes, a great actress who starred in Rita Sue and Bob too. She's been in Emmerdale, she's been in Corrie and Hollyoaks, you name it. And if that wasn't enough, well, we have got a gorgeous singer. He is called Rob Bowden King, semi-finalist on Britain's Got Talent in 2019. He's going to be singing some show tunes. So if you can get down there and support, that would be absolutely amazing. Now, there's two ways you can get tickets. You can go to the Greater Manchester Fringe website. All the information is on there, as is the other productions that are going to be part of Greater Manchester Fringe, which is for the whole of July. Or you can screenshot that link just below there and type it in to Google. It should come up. Hopefully, I will see you all there. Now, let's get on with the rest of the show because I had the pleasure of interviewing a fantastic actress. You might have recognised her in Coronation Street. She plays Dr. Gaddis, but now she is taking on a brand new role. And by goodness, she's fierce. Take a look at this. <laughs> mess with her would you that lady is christine mackie and she's getting ready to take on the lead of leah at hope mill theater this is a very exciting production and i managed to catch up with her to tell me all about it chris i think this is really exciting because this mm. is the first time we've got an all-female non-binary cast of king lear how come it's taken so long I know. I th well, I think it takes some some bravery to do it, and uh, it strikes me that you know Hannah Ellis Ryan <laughs> is probably the person to go to with Kaylee, and and you know the 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 group that surround her productions, Girl Gang and Unseemly Women, rather to 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 make to make that change. And it's interesting because, of course, you know women have played male parts in Shakespeare since well a long time. Sarah Siddon. I think in the 1800s or 18th century played Hamlet. Mm -hmm. So that's not unusual. But to have an all-women cast and non-binary cast means that, for me, 
shape uh, theatre is doing actually absolutely what it should do, which is to be to hold up a mirror, you know, to society and our society includes people who deserve to be seen and heard and included and be part of. And this is going to be everybody bringing absolutely who they are to the show. And we have 12 actors, which is just phenomenal. What, what a luxury. I mean, honestly, I feel quite giddy about that. It's so wonderful. I, I'm just giddy about it full stop because I just <laughs> think it just brings a freshness to it. And like yeah. you say, a current feel to it. Because a lot of Shakespeare does translate to modern day. I mean, it's so cleverly written back then mm. that it does transcend. I think it does. And, and it's, it's interesting because, you know, I think people still have an idea in their head that Shakespeare is somehow stonehenged. You know, it's it's big and it's 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 out there and it's got a sort of huge epic scale to it, but in the end, it's people talking, yeah. it, it, it's conversation, and there are battles, and in some plays you see fighting, and in others the battles happen off. You know, it's a combination. But what's remarkable, I think, about Shakespeare plays is that they've had a, he's had everything thrown at them. You know, everybody's tried everything with. With, yeah. the, with the plays and they stand up to it because they are so beautifully constructed and the language great, is just fantastic the, the great stories at the heart and it's an it. absolutely cracking story i mean it, it it really is it's gripping it's got everything you could want it's got you know revenge cruelty family feuds um love mm -hmm. a journey where somebody who starts off as a kind of supreme leader ends up l learning what it's like to feel what wretches feel, to see what the, the, the flip side of the coin is to their perception of what it's like to be a human being. Well, that's got nothing to do with just the 16th century. It's got to do with every, every audience has something that they can bring to it in terms of where it connects with them and uh, it, it there isn't every single part is fantastic <laughs> well somebody said actually and this is something i didn't realize because i've read king lear before i've actually not seen a stage performance of it so i can't mm. wait to see it on stage but somebody said oh it's almost a little bit like succession. I think that's a really good reference point for audiences because um, Lear is a manipulator mm -hmm. and the, it doesn't matter whether it's his the family that are the, you know, the pawns that are being shifted around the chessboard or whether it's other individuals in the court or other countries or other anything like, like Logan Roy, you yeah. know? gets what he wants. This my objective is to please me and to get the best for me. And I think there's a great similarity about Leah and that political kind of, um, and I think actually that political kind of almost corporate kind of sense of leadership is a good way to think about this production because as I say, it, it's not in some unspecified oldie worldy something. It's about people now and who's going to take over and how is it going to work and what do I get out of it? And then because the decisions that Leah makes are, are changed so fundamentally, it doesn't happen like he thinks going to happen. The ground shifts, everything changes. And, you know, I've always been fascinated by characters who get themselves into a corner and then they can't get out because it's too late it's you know so this other this other journey unravels and it, he ends up not where he thought he was going to be that's for sure i think this must be an absolute joy and a gift for an actor to play this and to be able to do this now like you say in this yeah. all-female production yeah. how special is that for you playing king lear i was absolutely knocked sideways by being asked. I, I can't tell you, it was not at all what I thought the Zoom meeting was going to be about. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, and so it took me quite a long time to really sort of take in the, the sort of enormity of it. But I started reading the script and fell in love with it. And, and I set myself a, a test to see if I could learn the first scene, which is quite a big scene, because I haven't done a Shakespeare for quite a few years now. Um, well, I'm hooked. I mean, it, <laughs> it's just fantastic it's so fantastic but all of the characters are so fantastic and i was very fortunate to be able to participate in a couple of the casting sessions days we had and it was just thrilling honestly though you are going to scare me chris i uh i showed mm -hmm. a trailer just before of you walking down the street all made up in your king Lear garb and uh you wouldn't mess with you, Chris. You really wouldn't mess with you. No, I know. And I tell you what was surprising, Michelle. It was extremely easy to do those faces. My husband <laughs> always used so it's, it's so it must be everything that must be quite close to the surface. My husband always jokes that the trouble is you should do more faces. You'd get more work if you did more faces. This is always the joke now. So and but uh, what an exciting day that was. It was oh. again, and I think it really kind of for me because I've been sort of in isolation for quite a while with the play because I've known about it for a long time. So I was, you know, a bit giddy actually meeting everybody and everybody getting dressed up and, 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 and out on this mad location and everything and being filmed. But it really seemed to me to capture the energy and freshness of approach and the sort of, you know, a, not a disregard, but a kind of, hello, here we are. Here we are. And I think that's just exciting. It's, it it. Is, and infectious. Actually. It totally, totally wet my appetite and uh, far cry away from what we see on our TV screens as a Dr. Gaddis mm. in Coronation Street. You've been doing that. It's been nine years now, Chris. I know. It's extraordinary, isn't it? I went in for two episodes and I dealt with um, Beth, who'd got some hives from using a bath bomb. And uh, <laughs> only on Corey, only on Corey, <laughs> and and uh, the beginning of Max's ADHD, oh. and uh, so it's been a remarkable um, job, and I love every minute of it. And I was in there this week, and people have been so interested and supportive and encouraging about the show. I'm very grateful for that. But it is lovely, and Dr. Gaddis is just fabaru. She's the most accommodating doctor in the world. Well, you just have to smile at her and she gives you an appointment. I know, and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> oh, do you know, if you've been in there this week, what is going down on those cobbles then? What's going to happen to someone? You know, it's like good I news know. or bad news. <laughs> I know, I know. There's, you never quite know. It's always exciting. But it is so lovely. And I think over the years, you know, the, the writers have, have, uh, have embraced the, kind of the character of Gadas, badass and all the rest of it so that's been really good fun so it's lovely because there are fun scenes yeah you know Definitely. of course she's a functionary she's there to facilitate where the story goes for different characters that that's that's understood but it is always richer than than simply going i'm terribly sorry you're going to have to wait three weeks before you can go to the hospital uh you know it, th there's there's more there's always more than that and and it's a bit, I'll tell you what's similar with theatre with like and 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 Corrie is that it's the teamness of it that's mm -hmm. so absolutely fantastic. It's it's joyful. I'm very I imagine that. I suppose you go in and it's kind of like rejoining the family again and then yeah. kind of step and it up. can be it can be quite daunting if you go in as a guest artist because you know you're you're very happy because you've got a job mm -hmm. and you go in and, and you, if it's a show that you you know of you have a sense of what it's all about and everything but you're there's a sort of concern to be the right um size to yeah. fit in the world of it if you see what i mean so that you so that you don't look out of place so there's quite a lot of nerves it can be quite nerve-wracking when you just just turn up on an on a sh an existing show but everybody is so welcoming and do you know where you're going have you got a cup of tea it's just lovely and they're always seem you know very interested when other people come in and inclusive and considering how fast the turnaround for everything is there's always a great deal of laughing it's just oh, there's a lot of fun isn't it fun. i reckon after you know people have seen you 
in King Lear. Yeah. Maybe Dr. Gaddis's next return will be as badass and... Uh, <laughs> We might have another feeling on our hands. I know. It would be interesting, wouldn't it, if she just turned? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, I know. With those faces, Chris, I think... I could possibly... Yeah. <laughs> now I've discovered my... Yeah, yeah, that's it. It could all happen. Well, we'll just have to see if Dr. Gaddas turns bad in Coronation Stream. But for now, do try and catch Christine in Lear at Hope Mill Theatre because I think this production is going to be very very special a big thanks to christine and of course lucy and laura my earlier guests if you liked what you saw tonight then do join me next week for live in the hive we're here every sunday night at eight o'clock on facebook on the live in the hive facebook and the i love manchester facebook and talking of i love manchester if you do want to go and see a show the best way to find out what's going on is to visit their website that's I love Manchester.com forward slash theatre. It's all on there, everything you need to know. And of course, if you want to give us a follow on social, we would absolutely love it. Share the love, tell everyone about us. We're on Instagram and Twitter at Live in the Hive 21. But as I say, we will be back here in my garden bar at the Hive next Sunday. Hope you'll be joining us too. Until then, have a great week. <laughs>